What's cracking, Pippin Kim? I'm your favorite entrepreneur. Welcome back to the channel. And today, if you got a pension for My Hero Academia, Yu Yu Hakusho, I think I got a pretty good character for you to check out. Let's get into it. I am your favorite entrepreneur, Base and Mental, and we got a character from My Hero Academia and another character from Yu Yu Hakusho. The one from Yu Yu Hakusho is more my favorite than the one from My Hero Academia. But it's all good. It ain't no big. The character we got from Yu Yu Hakusho is Genkai. And the character we're mixing her with is Kuru. So we're gonna get into her story real quick. In this case, Recovery Girl Genkai, that's her name, had a very interesting childhood. She grew up with very spiritual people. They believed in spirit, demons, possessions, all of that crazy stuff. But had a hard time believing corks. You see where I'm going with this. Growing up, every time she got sick, they just let her heal on her own. Little did they know it was actually her quirk that was here that was saving her. Every time she healed. Say so it could have been even dead dreadfully bad, like broken bones, whatever. They would just let her heal. They would wrap her up and all of that. Of course they had to do that basic part. But if say that she had an infection or something like that. They let her body fight it off, fever and all. She didn't realize she was doing it until it was almost to like one point she couldn't get sick anymore. And then she started practicing using her spiritual energy because of course her parents made her super aware of it. And she already had a knack for it in the first place. And this awareness heightened it and she started using that energy to sort of get her court to activate on itself. And then getting it to activate on itself is what caused her to start healing. So at first it was slow and then it became a sort of ongoing process that almost became something she couldn't turn off. Like you would think she was immortal as to how fast her quirk fused with her spiritual abilities to maintain herself. This is where the story gets a little black, AKA you gotta find out in the future. Like she has a history of being the super badass hero slash demon fighter throughout her the rest of her life after I would say maybe her teenage years and decided to just not live with her parents anymore. She, she just turned into a super badass martial arts spiritual quirky person hero. <laughs> and as things go on she's just fighting things after things learning all these crazy spiritual techniques putting them into practice and of course because of her healing ability she gets to heal a lot of people. Like say you had a whole like a whole gash in your side like you can see ribs muscle tear all of that she would have to then she could use her hand to then heal that entire area so like the bigger the wound the more contact she has to make with your body in order to help you heal if it causes any mental trauma she can heal that as well and not uh, in a sort of uh, uncontrollable way like it, it's more of a while she's healing the body, she starts to deal with the mind due to her mixing her spiritual ability and, to, and her quirks. So it started to create this sort of power in her called the spirit wave. You see where I'm going with this. The more she used it, the stronger it got. So it's almost like she can jump into your mind, but she has to touch you to do it. And she generally only does it through healing. So you can heal through, heal, have a full healing instead of just healing the body. She goes through her badassery life, lifestyle of a hero, demon fighter, all that crazy stuff. She then reaches UA where she becomes a permanent uh, nurse. She was like recovery girl. And she gets to meet Izuke and Eudoria on the testing ground for his first his exam into the school. Of course you know where this is going. She actually watches him use his quirk for the first time, busts up this really big robot, and sees something in him that makes her think this is one of the people she can give her ability to. So she starts to consider him her next uh, predecessor, no, aunt, what, descendant of her. You know what I'm trying to say. She can pass on to him, okay? As she sort of touches him, she starts to get a feeling of energy similar to that 
of Toshizen, aka Almighty. And Almighty didn't tell her, because they are close friends actually, that he was planning on passing his power on to this boy. He didn't know he, he found a candidate and had already passed it on him. So of course, she gets him back to the nursery, heals him up, and then beats the crap out of Toshizen because he didn't tell her. Second crystallization of power that's more human. Uh, she, she considers him, but then starts looking for other candidates as well. We have to see and wait and see where that goes. Also, if you made it to this point in the video, just do me one big favor. Like, comment, share, and subscribe to your boy's YouTube channel. Hit the notification bell so you can be notified whenever I upload any Amalgamites, any of my subscribers' uh, choice or idea videos, any movies and reviews, or anime reviews, or drawing tutorials. Because that's the bet. Hit that notification bell to be aware of it. And make sure you are dropping comments, what you do like about the video, what you don't like. But more importantly, characters and uh, maybe even just shows that you like, that you would like to see characters in them combined. If you think of anything, just drop it in the comments and you could probably have your character featured on my channel. But let's get back to the video. Moving on, you see her often healing uh, a lot of heroes and a lot of the, the would-be heroes throughout UA Academy because of their crazy tests and all that stuff. So it saves them a whole lot of healing time and all that. As in USJ, when all that crazy stuff went down, yeah, this time in my story, she was there and she was fighting with Aizawa. And because she can use a, a plethora of abilities, both long range and short range, it made her very helpful. She was then bouncing around trying to make sure the kids are okay, which often left Aizawa by himself. So they kept in contact, but just realistically, it just didn't help out. Regardless, she just she was super strong and fast. She just couldn't keep up because regardless of the recovery ability healing her, she was still aging. She was aging much slower, but just in this case, she's a lot older than everyone that's there. Kind of like Tsunade and Naruto. She gets to help out at USJ, uh, sort of retires herself to just being the nurse because then she knows she gets to help as many people as possible. While also looking for the proper predecessor for her ability. Uh, and I think she finds a very interesting one. One I don't think y'all will see coming. Recovery Girl, Genkai, abilities, like I said, are mainly healing. And due to her spiritual ability, she can uh, ex sort of, ex I would say extend energy, but that's not, project energy. She can project energy at opponents, uh, like energy blasts, of course. She can also absorb energy as well. And then apply that energy to the spirit wave to increase her own power. And then that also aids in her healing abilities and so on and so forth. So the more severe the injury, the more of her body she has to put into contact with the person. Say like if they're missing a leg. If she puts enough contact with you, she can help you basically regrow the leg. And if not regrow it, at least seal the wound. And seal it like, it's almost like she hacks your body. And then any trauma, she can also dive into your mind. Similar to telekinesis, but it's only tactile. She has to touch you. She can help heal the wounds in your mind within the amount of time she's uh, making contact with you. She usually hides behind a mask that way no one knows her true identity because if you did, you recognize how old she was and then a lot of people who've been around for forever will probably come after her. And uh, I'll be honest with y'all. The drawing this character, it was a challenge because both characters' designs are so simple and I've never really drawn an old person before. Up there with the wrinkles, but still young enough to not like be like, oh, she old, but like, oh, she, she's still young enough to get it. Like that kind of thing, you feel me? Like drawing that, I've always drawn sort of my age characters and younger. This is the first time I'm like going way beyond that. So it was a challenge for me. I wanted to try and find a good design that worked and still let you recognize the two halves put into one character. All right, everyone, that is Recovery Girl Genkai. It was a lot of fun though. She's a badass who basically is like Tsunade meets 
one for all, crammed into the same body, into the same body, all held together by a recovery girl. Kind of where that went. Like, comment, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and bring yourself back to the channel, all right? Remember, we're on the road to 20K, baby. You got to make these moves, and there's definitely going to be more coming down the pipeline soon, all right? I appreciate you. Thank you for coming by the channel. Peace, love, and blessings, and I will see you in the next video.